Here are the 10 things I wish I knew before I became a data engineer at Lyft and Amazon and how you can avoid these mistakes and move a lot faster along in your career. At Data Engineer Academy, we've already helped thousands of people land their next data role and get a higher paying job. And so from that experience, I can tell you what it is that they did wrong so that hopefully you can avoid years and years and in some cases, decades of pain. So the first mistake, don't wait for a promotion. Let's face it, you're working at a company, you're working really hard, you're working eight, nine, 10 hours a day, sometimes weekends, sometimes you're an on call, you're just grinding and grinding away only to find out that you have to wait one, two, and three years to actually get promoted and get a raise. And let's face it, when you do get that raise, you kind of look at your friends and you just say, man, this actually doesn't really keep up with inflation. You kind of joke about it, but deep down, you know, like, uh, I'm hurting a little bit. And the thing is that happens at every level. That happens if you're trying to go from level four to level five, level five to level six, etc. And so what statistics have shown is that the person who upskills and job hops the most is the one that can increase their compensation the fastest, right? And we have friends that are making almost a million dollars a year right now. And they're only five years into the industry because they job hopped three times in those five years. And the stocks also went up like crazy in that new company that they joined. So what's the key? Well, the key is to recognize that because companies are only going to give you three to 5% raises per year and maybe 10 to 20% raises when you get promoted, the key is to always keep your eye on the next company and to job hop knowing that you will get paid for the skills that you are accumulating while you are currently working at your current job. What we have found is that if you switch, you could expect somewhere between 20 40, 60% salary increases. On average, that's what we at Data Engineer Academy have seen for those who have landed a job within like six months. Now, we have seen special cases where people have doubled or tripled up their income, but for the most part, a 20, 30, 50% increase is still pretty, pretty good. And you can do it probably in less than a year, especially if you are already working in tech. The second biggest misconception is that data engineering is a lot about coding. But in data, there's also things such as architects, engineers, analysts. So depending on which role you get, you might get 30, 40, 60% of your day as coding. And then the other part is actually communication, cross collaboration, and working with stakeholders. And so what we have found at Data Engineer Academy is that the number one round engineers typically fail before they get to working with us is the behavioral question round. And so what you actually want to do is you want to work on your soft skills, your communication skills, and frankly, just your interviewing skills so that you can actually feel like, huh, I can present myself in a way that comes across as a leader and understandable and easy to work with in just a 30 minute span. So again, don't just focus on coding and develop that soft skills and communication, both for the job and for the interview. The third thing that I wish I knew before I started in my career as a data engineer is that you don't need a lot of certificates or college degrees in order to get a high paying role. I think what people confuse in their mind is skills and accreditation, right? Like those two are entirely different things. And so you can have a certificate that says you finished a Snowflake course, but that doesn't necessarily mean you know how to implement Snowflake in the real world. Because again, remember mistake number two, if you can actually come across as being able to communicate and articulate what it is you're working on, then you have a much higher chance of getting the job. And then you just learn on the job. So again, from my experience and from the data that we've collected, doing real world projects and presenting them on the resume and on the interview are way better than spending three, four, seven months on some certificate that ultimately all of your competitors already have. The fourth mistake I knew, and it kind of relates to number two, but it's prepping on the soft skills. They don't prepare for their leadership skills. A lot of the people that we help, a lot of the people that are probably watching this, you guys are already making 150, 200, something along the lines. And what is really interesting is you guys already have years of experience in tech. You guys, already have years of experience maybe working with other teams etc but what you guys may or may not have is experience managing others right the thing is being able to articulate what your leadership style looks like is actually a skill within itself and so for you being able to a show what your leadership style is and b tell 
the technical aspects of a project to stakeholders and other teams is actually just as important as being able to work on your communication and the way you come across on an interview. Mistake number five, recruiters and hiring managers are only going to spend five seconds on your resume. And I wish I knew this. I wish I worried about the top half of the resume a lot more than I worried about what I did 10 years ago, because frankly, they don't care what you did 10 years ago, right? They care about what you did the most recent experience and they care about your high level of skills, which should be at the very top of the the resume, that your resume is optimized for them to really assess your skills in as little as five seconds. Mistake number six, and this one's going to sound simple, but it's just apply to more jobs, right? We see a lot of people apply to 10 jobs, get one interview and get really, really, really hurt because from a mindset perspective, they think to themselves, wow, I wasn't able to get nine interviews. But the thing is 10 jobs, one interview is a 10% success rate, which is amazing. Again, we have the data. Most of our data says if you have experience in tech, you might do it in 5% of the time, which is still good. But if you're able to do it in 10% of the time, literally the advice is just do more. And I know it sounds simple, but you have to do it like if you were a machine and you have no emotions involved. You're like, you know what? I applied to 10. I got one. Let me just apply to 100. Let me get 10. And then out of those 10, I bet you can ace around and get a job offer. So if that's you, if you're in that boat, just apply to more. Trust me, volume is the game in 2025. Mistake number seven is a huge one, not applying to jobs that have equity. So if you go and look up something called levels.fyi, levels.fyi is a site, we're not affiliated with it, that will tell you what companies are willing to pay you from a total compensation standpoint, both from a salary standpoint, a equity standpoint, and a bonus standpoint, signing bonus, incentive bonus, right? The thing is, most tech companies don't pay for equity, but there is a top 20, 30, 40% that do, the big tech companies, and that equity is what makes your growth in your career earnings absolutely exponential. Mistake number eight, are you actually rowing in the right boat? This is a term I talk about a lot, which means if you work for a company that's growing fast, maybe even a company that's small enough where you get equity and the equity grows with it, you can actually earn a lot more than somebody who is working at, let's say, Bank of America. Again, no hate on Bank of America, but the problem with Bank of America is that they're typically a very stable company. They don't give you equity. The equity is not really growing year over year. So you already know most likely what you're going to be making at the end of the year, because whatever you thought you were going to make at the beginning of the year is what you end up with. And so what I recommend for you is to really actually decide for a second, hey, not only am I good enough for this company, but is this company good enough for me? Because if you find a company that is really good, then you'll grow with it and you'll earn with it as well. And that is, by the way, why I recommend people try to job search while they're currently in their current job because then you become less desperate. So look for fast, high growing companies and don't settle for something that you think is just going to be a stable, a stable Nelly. Again, if you like stable, nothing wrong with that, but depends what you want. Mistake number nine, it's not constantly upscaling. If I knew this before I became a data engineer, I would have just gone and kept learning like a madman because the more you learn, the more efficient you'll be at your job and the faster you can get promoted or even job hop again. And so I, I, it's just a trend we've seen just constantly learning is going to always make you more and more attractive to companies. And the reason we're not really that scared of AI is because we know that the key is just going to be for you to upskill in AI, right? Because if you upskill in AI, then all of a sudden you, you're not just a data engineer applying to a job, you're a data engineer with AI skill set. Mistake number 10 that I wish I knew and that I've seen a bunch of clients do is they just are over overthinking. I can't tell you how many times I talk to someone and they're like, I have 10, 20 years experience. I'm like, great. How many jobs have you applied to? And they say zero. And I'm like, you never know, right? You never know. So just go out and apply. What if you do get a job? What if you do get an interview, right? At least you can apply, test it out and see where you stand. So again, don't overthink it, just apply and see what happens. So that's mistake number 10, don't overthink it. And if you found this video helpful, please subscribe, please share, everything means the world and let's help tech professionals earn what they know they deserve and what they know they can. And ideally, if you want, just comment below what other kind of videos will be helpful for you in your journey as you are looking for a new job. Otherwise, you can click on this video over here to watch an entirely free masterclass on Snowflake from beginner to end. And maybe this is one of the projects that you can put on your resume and help you land a higher paying data job. Otherwise, I'll put a link in the description if you want to see how you can work with us. Cheers.